Hello Outriders, it is Ebontis here, and in this video I want to answer two questions. One, why you would farm a demo, and two, how do you farm the demo? What is the best way to farm it? What are the certain, like, places where certain things are farmable? I'm going to cover all that in the second half. So let's jump into farming the Outriders demo. Updated, this I'm recording on March 8th. I think the servers were updated a few days ago, but things have changed a little bit since the demo came out kind of in its first week. So let's get this thing going for the updated farming guide for the Outriders demo. Okay, so the first question you guys want answered is why would you farm a demo? Well, the big answer is that all things that you do in the, in the demo, all the progress, the gear, the loot, all the stuff you do in the demo, the resources, is going to carry straight into the game. So when the new game, when the full game launches on April 1st, this character that you're looking at right here, if I didn't touch anything between now and then, I could log in on April 1st, pick up this guy, and go into chapter two in the demo, and I've already got everything I've got right here going straight in. So that's a cool part about it. The resources, the weapons, the armor mods, everything I've unlocked so far, I'm good to go and taken in. Now, the specific things that you're going for, resources, scrap, which you get from either breaking down gear or weapons, or selling it to vendors. That's your currency for vendors. You can have 25,000 scrap. You can have 1,000 leather. You get that by breaking down armor. You can have a thousand iron. You get that by breaking down weapons. You can have 10 titanium. You get that by a whole bunch of random little places, and it's just kind of sporadic where you're going to find it. Tough enemies, you might find stuff in those iron things on the wall, disassembling higher tier items. Titanium is going to be the harder one to come by because I've farmed a lot, and this is only up to seven, so this one could take you a minute. And then finally, you're going to get shards. Shards are used in crafting to raise specific attributes of equipment. And you gain when you disassemble weapons or armor that have the little mark by them. Bonus firepower. Max health. Uh, anomaly power. Those are armor. Weapons. Armor piercing. Crit damage and weapon life leech. Those are weapon mods. So all these shards are going to be able to come over to, say, this one is 31 bonus firepower. Now, I don't know how the tiers specifically work or how you're going to be upgraded, how much you're going to be able to upgrade it. There's probably a cap. But say this one's at tier 2. I don't actually know if that's how it works, but say I've got bonus firepower 31. Well, maybe if I want to take it up to 35, take it up to the next level, I take my bonus firepower. I've got 178 of these shards. However many it takes, now this piece of gear that I'm wearing has more bonus firepower. Pretty straightforward. That's resources. All are going to be fish beneficial, and they're going to give you a little bit of a leg up in the full game. Well, that's those. The next piece is the mods. You can see every one of these pieces of blue gear has a mod on it. The weapons are universal, so all classes can use all weapons. The armor is going to be class-specific because the mods that come on those are going to be uh, very specific to the abilities that you have. Now, the game really opens up if you toy around with a build that has, like, I have three mods for the same ability. So when I start getting into, like, using that ability, it's a lot more powerful than it started with. So that's why the armor mods are really going to change things up. And when you get to blue right now, you can see most of these just have one mods. There's going to be epic, which is going to have two slots. And then there's legendary, which has two slots, but also has even the best mods, which are tier three. You can see that triple Roman numeral. So there's tier two, which is like brain eater on here. Tier, tier three, which is killing spree. And then tier one, pretty basic stuff. So once you see purple gear, you're going to be able to have, you know, potentially over here, I've got to assume some of these pieces of armor might have two different mod slots on there. You're going to have some really, really big min-maxing opportunities with these mods. And you're going to be able to do some really, really cool stuff. And the nice thing about the demo is it's kind of going to help you get ready for crafting. Now, crafting, we can't do in the demo, so you can't really get a feel for it. You're just going to have to take my word for it. But the idea is, take this piece of this sniper rifle. It's got the weapon mod on it that says Shield Maiden. Shots generate shield. Now, tricksters are the only ones who can naturally generate a shield. But as a Technomancer, if I equip this and I shoot stuff, I generate shield on my character. Makes me a little more powerful and a little more survivable. So say I really want this mod, but I don't want it on this sniper rifle. Well, what you can do... Go to dismantle it, and if you come down here, you'll notice the things I'm going to get by dismantling it. I'm going to get 26 iron. Now I'm capped out, so that doesn't do me any good. I'm going to get 9 crit damage shards. 
those are something I can use to upgrade the crit damage on a weapon in the future. And I also unlock the mod, Shield Maiden, for all crafting in the future. So then say I have... Take this thing, for example. It's got weapon life leech. Cool. I like that. But I don't really like this clip re clip combustion, where when I reload, I do the shockwave. I'm a technomancer. I play a little farther away. It doesn't do me that much good. So what you're going to be able to do with crafting is take that Shield Maiden mod that you've unlocked, because once you dismantle it, it's unlocked for good, and I can go to the crafting table or wherever it's going to be, and I can choose that Shield Maiden mod, spend whatever resources it takes, slot it into this weapon, and now I have Weapon Life Leech, Firepower 299, but the mod will show a Shield Maiden. I can write over that one. It's pretty cool. So you're really going to be able to make weapons and armor too. They're going to fit to your playstyle. Because as you unlock the mods, it's going to give you a lot more flexibility for how to play the character that you've got. And then you might be able to have a couple different loadouts that you want to use. I got two different weapons here. They have these crazy mods that work with these abilities. I got two other weapons that I've decked out completely differently. And they're going to work with this other set of abilities. And you're going to be able to really customize your character that way. Now, you notice the Shield Maiden mod does not have anything next to it. But if I come over here to the Toxic Bullets, you'll see this little, like, 2x2 two two grid where it says 11.9%. Right below it, it has this little, like, you know, grid box. What that means is I've already broken down a weapon, at least on this character. I don't know how far the crafting system goes between characters. We'll have to see. But I've already broken down a previous weapon that has this mod on it. So if I go to break this one down, you'll notice I'm not going to get the mod again. I've already unlocked it. So... At that point, if you're trying to, you know, max out resources and you see you've got a blue weapon that you're not going to use anymore and you've already unlocked the mod, there's no reason to dismantle it unless you're just trying to get some iron. But if you're kind of maxed on resources, but you're trying to max out scrap at this point, if you've already got the mod and you don't need the other two resources, well, sell this to a vendor. It's going to be worth a lot more than it normally is. So that's the main idea. You've got resources that you can stock up on all these down here. Guards as well, going to help you with crafting. Then, you're going to be able to make a character and get a feel for, I've got these three armor mods that really help out Blighted Rounds, and I feel pretty powerful. So when I jump into Chapter 2, I've got one ability I can depend on, and then continue to work on building my character how I see fit. But I kind of jump in knowing I've got some reliable gear that make my abilities more powerful than they already are. And then finally, you're going to be able to unlock these mods so you can use those for crafting all throughout the game, and you're just going to have a step up there. So it depends on how much of a leg up you want to have going into the full game, but the biggest piece about it is it's really up to you and how much time you want to put in. If you want to try one character, don't really love that one, try another one, enjoy that one, put five or six hours into that character, grind a little bit, get some decent gear, think you're doing okay, and you stop there, that's totally fine. That character is still going to be waiting for you when you go into the full game. If you're crazy like me, and I've farmed this thing for like 50 hours, now granted, I have like five characters, so there's a reason I've kind of spread my time a bit more. But maybe you go through and spend a lot of time, you're having fun playing the demo, you jump in a little bit every day, do some farming runs, which I'll show you in a second, and you get a legendary, guess what? Now you've got a legendary to go into the full game, you're probably going to be able to level it up, you might even get a duplicate of this Thunderbird later on, so then you can break this one that you've got down, use those mods somewhere else. So the idea is it's all in how ahead of the game you want to be for the demo. But the nice thing is they've kind of set it up, even the legendaries, they're going to be really rare, so that you're not going to come by a ton of them. But a lot of the blues, the mods, and the resources are just going to give you a step into the game, so you're not broke on resources, and you've got some crafting options to start off with. That's the main idea. Legendaries are hard to come by, and I'm going to cover those last in the second part of this, is how you farm this demo. So, let's go to part two. Alright, so part one is why you would farm the demo. Covered most of the details of that, your resources, your mods, um, kind of giving yourself a decent built character, and then if you want to go for legendaries. Now let me explain how to do those pieces. So the first kind of level of farming that you're going to be doing is just going for resources and getting your character kind of leveled up. And you're able to do that in pretty much doing anything in the game. There's really not a limitation, a decent recommendation, so you don't get too burnt out on certain things. You can return to your lobby in any game. When you get back into the lobby, you can select a story checkpoint, and you can choose what you want to do. 
if you start right up here with descend into the hound's warehouse to save Jakob, you're going to literally get right when you got into rift town save Jakob. he's going to go up to shira you'll talk to shira then you're going to carve your path all the way to the altered you're going to fight goss in the end go back talk to shira that's going to open up some side quests for you to be able to go do you can go do all the side quests and then you can come back once you're done with all the side quests come right back here to select a story point go back up to hound's warehouse and go through all that now if you go through that run there are a total of like 15 chests which will you know help you out amongst all the enemies that you're going to be killing as well now chests will help you get whites greens and blues they will not help you get legendaries there are no epics in the demo i said that there are no purple things in the demo they took them out there are a few places for legendaries i'll cup i'll get those in a second but no chests except one chest and it's the one after you beat goss the altered boss like when you kind of spawn at the top of a ramp run down the stairs there's a a chest basically staring at you that chest can drop a legendary so farming him is not a bad idea when you get to go for le legendaries but if you're just going for the blues the greens go do anything you want and if you ever need to reset the chest which you still probably you know potentially want to do for a while make sure you reset in here to a story point go back out descend into there if i want to confront the altered for example i can switch here and it's going to be take me straight to the altered checkpoint and i'll show you guys what i mean so once you get out there, you could fight the boss. You could go back, do some side quests. Those are all options. So let's go in. And this is what I mean. Once you've done this once, when you load in, joys of loading things, I'm at the end of my run through all the stuff that's out there. Took a second for it all to load in the world. You know, if you got some stuff up here, there's a chest over there. You haven't seen that one before. And literally all I'm going to do is run forward and fight the boss. And at the after killing the boss, there is one more chest behind him. I'm not going to go fight the boss, but this is an example. Like this chest, for example, if you've already picked it up on a run to the boss and then you like, you know, run through the world and get back out here, this chest will be opened already. Any chest you open, you get to open it one time. But if you reset the story checkpoints, you'll be able to open those. And that's why chests are beneficial is because as you go through and you're looking for basic level gear, I got a green weapon. I got a piece of armor. So green piece of armor, weapon, already had these before, don't need them. I'm going to go ahead and dismantle those. Again, depends on what you're going for. When you finally get to the point where you're like, all right, my character is in decent shape. I got some mods I like. Uh, weapons are pretty good. You probably don't have legendaries yet. You want to try for legendaries. Again, you do have a month, so you got some time. So one, as I stated, is going to be right here. When you finish up killing Goss. So if you run through here, go fight Goss, kill him. And the chest at the end of this piece is going to actually have a chance to drop a legendary. So if you get to a point where you get a really good efficient farm on the boss, load this checkpoint up where you're going to confront the altered. Go in here. I'm going to beat him real quick. And then I'm going to point out the chest that can show the altered. All right, so once you kill Goss, always you're going to land base basically right here at the top of this little landing section. And you'll be able to run right down here. And this is one of the chests that can drop legendaries. Now, granted, will it? It's a very, very small chance. I've farmed for about 50 hours total across all my characters, so not all pure farming. But I played for about 50, and I've got like three. So the drop is going to be really low. But again, you'll get a couple pieces of gear. Now, there are three, there are a few other places where you can get legendaries. Let me explain those. The second place that you can get legendary weapons to potentially drop are by completing side quests. Now you have to go through the whole thing, come back and talk to the vendor. So this is payback, for example. You've got the wounded soldier down here, Audrey Storm. Talk to her real quick. You can usually skip the dialogue fairly quickly. Pick up the quest. And then what we'll do is we'll go inside. I'm going to clear this thing out, and then I'm going to show you what the drop looks like because it's not one that you'll just readily see. So let me clear this out, and we'll be right back. All right, so once you have killed the captain, you warp back to the crossroads. What you're going to do is come up here to the top and talk to her again. You're going to see the check mark above her head. That means you know you completed the activities. Now, I did pick up some loot in there, so I want to make sure I mouse over everything so you guys see how this loot drops. And that's a very specific thing that I want to show all of you. So you'll notice no gear on my character right now has a yellow arrow. Doesn't matter what spot, it's got white because I'm looking at these two spots, but nothing shows yellow. So what's going to happen is when you complete a side quest, you're going to talk to the NPC, go through the quick dialogue, toss the head on the ground. And then when you're done, what you need to do is check your inventory because it actually goes straight in there. There's no pop-up. 
So you'll notice I have a new headpiece right over here. It's 202. It's kind of like something I've already got, but this is how it drops. So you need to complete the side quest. That's one of the keys. Talk to the NPC and actually finish the dialogue and then check your inventory. So if you do want to know what drops and you're only farming for legendaries, well, at that point, you don't have to pick up too much else and you should be able to tell what's new and what's old. So hopefully all that stuff helps. So that is how the side quests work, and that is how each of them are going to work. You've got Terra and Firma, which you can pick up from Shira. You've got a bad day, which you're going to pick up between the two vendors. And then you've got payback out here. Now the difference is, I can turn right around and start this mission over again. If I go back in, the chests inside the mission will not be there. The enemies will, so I can kill those and they might drop something. And that's the third place things can drop. Random enemies in the world, especially higher tier, like snipers, big armored dudes, the big swinging melee guys, all of those throughout anywhere can have a chance to drop a legendary. That's where I got one of mine. It was just a random, completely random drop. But the chests will no longer be there. But if you're going for legendaries, the chests in side quests don't matter. The only chest that matters once you're going for legendaries is the boss, Goss. So that's the only one, and that's the one I showed you earlier. But if I want to, I can go in here, kill the enemies, kill the captain, pop back out, talk to her again. And I can theoretically do this over and over and over. And this is probably one of the quickest ones to load into. Because depending on your running distance that you've got, if you're trying to do Terra Inferma, well, you can talk to Shira. Then you warp back out here, do this one, warp back in, run up to Shira, who's usually a little bit far away, talk to her, run back down to a flag. This one's just a little quicker. So if you're trying to farm a specific side quest and just, you know don't want to do the boss or run through the game, payback is probably the quickest. Uh, second is probably going to be a bad day where you talk to the vendors, you literally go down into the Hound's territory, and then you warp back in, you're kind of right back in the same place. Terra Infirm is probably the slowest, but there's also a captain in there. Captains have a chance to drop legendaries, so some people just, like, kill themselves over and over on the captain farm. That's a completely different thing. But those are the main ways that you're going to get legendaries. You can either kill Goss at the solar tower and you can always reload his checkpoint if you want to and it's the chest right after him that is the only chest in the demo that can drop legendaries you can do side quests and when you complete the side quest interaction with the npc like complete the check mark it will go straight into your inventory that works with any side quest and then all the enemies in the game theoretically have a chance just depending on how many you're fighting you may see one drop completely random uh but the higher tier enemies the captains you've got the snipers the captains seem to be a smidge higher but, you know, you've got your snipers, your melee guys, your big armored beefy boys. So depending on where you're running around, reset the story checkpoint, run through the main campaign, all the way from camp, all the way through to the solar outpost, there's a lot of enemies to fight along the way. So it really depends on where you want to try and farm, get tired of one, move over to another. But again, legendaries are going to be hard to come by. And I don't want to express that any more than I possibly can because they really, really are. Like, as I said, 50 hours, I luckily got these two on one character and I have one on one other character. So I'm still missing quite a few of the legendaries in the game, but that is how it works. But again, if you're not quite on the legendary part, it's cool to go for those. But if you're trying to be like, some weapons I started getting were in the 270s. Then I started seeing stuff that's about 300. I've got a couple that are up to like 330. So... I've got the, so even if you're not getting legendaries, having something that's like 330 and then you, you get a decent sniper rifle that's fairly close to damage, say maybe like 310, you're going to be more efficient at farming and then still when you go into the full game, you're going to be a bit more powerful. Same thing with armor. If you're going through trying to build a decent loadout, I can go over here and in case maybe I don't care about bonus firepower, I want anomaly power. I want my stuff to hit harder. So then I jump up here and I can switch. I can go stuff that's a little higher in armor. And I'm just a little stronger. And all that little, you know, messing around with mods, finding a build that you like. Get some armor that's a little bit stronger so you're a little harder to kill. Get some weapons that are a little beefier even before you get legendaries. And then also unlock a bunch of mods for crafting. There's a lot of things to farm in this demo if you want to. If you want to play it for a couple hours, like, you know, three hours, go through the campaign on one character and be like, ah, that one feels cool. Try one other character as well. See if you like that one. You know, find at least one character you like, spend some time with them, experiment with their abilities a little bit, and then see if you find a play style that fits. If that's all you want to do and then wait for the full game, there's not a thing wrong with that. But if you want to farm, hopefully this video has helped you out. So thank you guys for tuning in to another Outriders video. Uh, you'll probably be seeing a little bit of back and forth between Outriders and Destiny. Uh, if you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and the alert bell. You guys have been really supportive lately, so keep that going. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like below. Leave a comment if I forgot anything, because I'm usually never going to claim to be perfect. So leave a comment if you've got any other ideas and thoughts about all of this farming. 
And you can also find me on Twitter and then streaming over on Twitch. I do a fair amount of streaming over there. Sometimes I stream on YouTube, generally a bit more on Twitch, though. So follow me on those platforms if you enjoy the content, and I hope to see you in the future. Have a good one, and good luck.